So we'll now have two brief comments from the floor. The first um, is Mr. Samuel George. Uh, Mr. George is a member of parliament from the country of Ghana. Mr. George. Thank you very much, and all protocol duly observed. As a natural born man, a charismatic Christian, a husband of one woman, a father of three children, and an elected member of Ghana's parliament, I hold the role of the family extremely sacred. I believe that the right to found a family and determine same is a right that accrues to everyone within the context and spirit of the 1992 Constitution of the Republic of Ghana, the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, the UN Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and several other recognized international treaties like the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights and the International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights. 75 years after the UDHR, the spirit and letter are more poignant than at any other time in our history. At a time in our world where supposedly progressive forces are agitating for a redefinition of the core principles of what a family is and represent in a somewhat regressive manner, the genuinely progressive voices like those in this room must rise in defense of family, its values, and protections. The concept of the natural family is under attack and a siege is being attempted on the spirit of the Declaration of Human Rights. Let me be clear here and now, sirs and ma'ams, there is a distinct difference between sex and gender or gender identity. The pseudo war being waged by some against the family is premised on this obfuscation and literal obliteration of the distinction between sex and gender. Sex is a biological construct that transcends race, ethnicity, religion, and jurisdictional jurisprudence. Sex is binary. You're either male or female. God determines this at the moment of conception. A fetus carries either the XX or XY chromosome, determining whether it is born female or male. From my beloved Ningo Pram Pram constituency in Accra, Ghana, to New York, and Rio de Janeiro to Madrid or Delhi to Perth, the interpretation of XY and XX is constant. Gender or gender identity, on the other hand, is a social construct that has evolved on the peculiarities of various societies. From the onset, matching the binary nature of sex, we see different recognitions of gender today across the world. There is no universality in the concept of gender or gender identity, and it is highly fluid. And as such, gender or gender identity cannot form the basis for any rights accruing in a covenant, a convention, or international treaty which seeks to be globally acceptable and binding because we have different interpretations. This is the basis for my avowed position that the letter and spirit of the UN Universal Declaration of Human Rights is apt and meets the needs of our global world today. It emphasizes in Article 2 of the rights, in Article 2, the rights and freedoms in the declaration, and it's clear that there shall be no distinctions made based on sex. Yes, it says sex, not gender or gender identity. This is a definite position and must be defended by all progressive forces. The UDHR in Article 16.1 makes yet another actual position that I cherish and implore all of us to hold fast and dear, that the right to marry and found a family shall be between men and women of full age, without prejudice to their race, nationality, or religion. Yes, it says men and women, not men and men or women and women. Yet again, this is another reinforcement of the principle of sex and not gender. As a proud African, Article 2 of our African Charter on Human and People's Rights also echoes the principles of enjoyment of rights without prejudice to sex and not gender. As Africans, the role of the family is cardinal to our society and its well-being. To reinforce this, Article 18 of the African Charter recognizes the family as society's natural unit and, basic, and basis. It, impo it imposes a responsibility on member states in the African Union to protect the physical health and morals of the family. Yes, it said morals of the family. It declares the family as the custodian of morals and traditional values recognized by the community. The Charter says there is no ambiguity here that the values of family as a union between a natural born man and woman must be protected by all of us. Against this backdrop, together with seven of my colleagues in Ghana's parliament, I'm sponsoring a private member's bill titled The Promotion of Proper Human Sexual Rights and Ghanaian Families Values Bill 2021 in Ghana's parliament. In conclusion, 
I reference the critical role that a family plays in the development of society through the development, education, and upbringing of children. Article 18, 3, and 4 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights declares respect for the liberties of parents and legal guardians to ensure their children's religious and moral education in conformity with the convictions of the parents and legal guardians. This right is not given to an educational board or a pressure group or a government. It is the sole right and preserve of parents in the family unit. Ladies and gentlemen here in Garda at the UN headquarters in New York, the family must remain respected and recognized as the union between natural born men and women of full age who have the right and responsibility to determine by their beliefs and in conformity with the generality of their community the details of the religious and moral education of their children in a manner that respects communal norms of public safety, public order, public health, public morality, and the fundamental rights and freedoms of the majority of their community. I thank you. Shalom.